Hi, my name is Ardit and I'm going to be your instructor in this Modbus course. In this course you're going to learn how to create a Windows Modbus master program using Microsoft.net. To complete this tutorial we need Visual Studio software. Search on Google for Visual Studio Download. Then click Download Visual Studio. At the time this video was recorded, version is 2019. Click Free Download. Open Visual Studio Installer and then click Continue. Then select .NET Desktop Development and then click Install. After installing the Visual Studio, we need a simulator. Or if you have a slave device that supports Modbus, you can also use it. Search for Mod Underline RS Sim Download. Then click Mod RS SIM2 Download. Just open the file and we are ready to use it. After installing these two software, we need to download the Modbus library. Search for Easy Modbus and download .NET version. From this zip file we only need the DLL file. Extract the zip file and search for Easy Modbus DLL file. We want to create a new project in Visual Studio. Click Create a new project. Select a template, Windows Form App, .NET Framework, or search by this name. And then click Next. Enter the name of the project. I want to type the name Modbus. And then click Create. A blank design form will be displayed. Right click and then view code. We want to add Easy Modbus library. Right click on references in Solution Explorer and search for Easy Modbus DLL. Type using Easy Modbus. So we want to use classes from the Easy Modbus namespace. In the public form 1 field, create a new Modbus client object from Modbus client and then enter a port name when you have connected the device or just type COM3 first. I will explain later that. From object Modbus client, we want to configure Modbus settings. Unit identifier 1 Unit identifier is not necessary since default slave ID is 1. Baud rate 9600. Baud rate is not necessary since default baud rate is 9600. Parity none and stop bits too. Parity and stop bits are also predefined if the slave device has the same parameters. And then from the new object Modbus client, call the function connect. So, the slave device or simulator has a default settings and we don't need these lines of code. We want to turn on coil5 in the slave device. The function is called write single coil and we need two parameters, starting address and value. I have written 4 in function because the count starts from 0. So, the number 4 is the first parameter of the write single coil function. The starting address parameter is for the coil 
that we want to enable or disable. And the second parameter is the boolean value and this data type can only have one of two values as true or false. This means that we are saying in the slave device that coil 5 must be turned on but if we write false it means that coil 5 will be off. Before compiling the code we also download the com0com serial part emulator. The nullmadam emulator allows you to create an unlimited number of virtual com port pairs and use any pair to connect one com port based application to another. Click virtual com driver and then download. Open virtual serial driver and then click continue demo. We want to pair COM3 and COM4 as virtual ports. After that click add pair and we are ready for the next step. After configuring the COM emulator open the Modbus simulator. Please make sure you have the same settings as we wrote in Visual Studio. But only the port should be different because we are using the COM emulator to pair in COM. If you are using a slave device, please make sure that you have typed in Visual Studio the same port to which the device is connected. Then go to the Visual Studio and click Start. We have created a blank design form, but in the background, the code has turned on coil 5. Now we want to create two buttons that will turn this coil on and off. From the toolbox create two buttons and then change the name. At the properties you can change the name from button 1 to start and from button 2 to stop. First make the object modbus client a global parameter. Then move the code inside the function of button. Do the same procedure for the stop button, but make sure you type false instead of true because we want to start the coil 5 with the start button and turn it off with the stop button. After that start the program. So when we click on start coil 5 will turn on and when we click stop the coil 5 will turn off. Now we want to have more access than to a coil. And we do the same procedure as before, but be careful in the coil number. So create two another buttons, one for start and one for stop. So we write modbus client write single coil 5 true and modbus client write single coil 5 false. Then click start and now we are able to control two coils, coil 5 and coil 6. In the next tutorial you are going to learn how to control more than a single coil with one button from the function write multiple coils how to read and write holding registers on the slave device and how to create a modbus.x file in Visual Studio. I hope you learned a lot and thank you for watching.